Hello, I'm uh, Paul Calvano. So what we're going to do during this video is I want to explore some of the, the Chrome user experience report data so that um, we can understand how the data is structured and how um, and it puts us in a good uh, place for starting to query the data in the next video. So if you've uh, if you followed the previous video, you should be at this point right here where you're looking at the Google BigQuery console. You can see the Chrome user experience report tables um, and you have a project that you created, uh, I called mine Crux, that doesn't have any data sets. The, uh, if you expand the Chrome user experience report, uh, then you will see, there we go, um, that there is a data set for every country as well as an all data set. And if we expand the all data set, um, or, any of, or any of the data sets for that matter, you'll see a list of tables starting with October 2017 and ending with April 2018. The Chrome User Experience Report has a website on developers.google.com, which um, let's actually go there real quick. And it, it goes into some of the methodology about how the data is collected and what metrics are provided. Uh, this uh, um, the data format here shows a, a pretty good example of what is what is provided here. So you can see the origin is one of the dimensions, and that is the website. Uh, and it's both the protocol as well as the domain name. So you might have HTTP colon slash slash www.example.com as well as HTTPS colon slash slash www.example.com. There's an affection connection type. Uh, I'm sorry, effective connection type, um, which in this case is uh, 4G a form factor name, um, desktop, mobile, or phone, and tablet. And then there is histogram data. And what you'll see is a, a bin start and a bin end. So this particular, um, this particular um, stat is showing that 12% that, that or 12.3% 12 of page views, for example, .com, on the 4G connection type with, uh, with a phone form factor have a load time between 1 and 1.2 seconds. Now all of the uh, densities uh, for every form factor connection type within an origin should add up to 100%. And we'll explore some of that uh, in a little while. Uh, because these are uh, these are arrays as opposed to flat variables. What you'll you'll find is that we have to use some SQL to unpack the arrays as well. Uh, if you want to get started quickly, there is a, a, a Google, Rick Viscomi has created a fantastic uh, guide called the Crux Cookbook. Um, I'll pull that up over here. All the links will be in the uh, below the video as well. And what you can see in the Crux Cookbook is a bunch of different uh, SQL queries. For uh, for you know pulling out the data from uh, from Crux, so you can kind of go follow along with uh, with some of these. But in the next video, we're going to go through a few of these and and uh, or a few examples similar to this, so that you can get started. But let's go ahead and uh, and start um, just doing some basic uh, exploratory work here. So uh, one of the first things that you may want to do with BigQuery is most of the examples we're going to look at, or all of the examples we're going to look at, are using standard SQL. So the first thing um, when you open up a, a Compose Query dialog is you're going to click on Show Options and then uncheck Use Legacy SQL. Standard SQL provides a lot more functionality um, on top of what you can do with Legacy SQL. Then. Uh, if I select one of the tables, like for example, I select uh, April 2018, I can see the data structure. Um, I can see the way that it's uh, um, the way that it's organized. You can see the um, origin, the effective connection type, the form factor, as well as all the histogram data for um, the metrics that are provided here, which in this case are first paint, first content full paint, DOM content loaded, and onload. If I look at the details section of the table, I can see how large the table is. In this case, 26. 0.8 gigabytes, and how many rows of data there are. There's 10 million rows of data in this uh, in this table, which is uh, um, the the I believe that there's about three and a half million websites in here, but we'll we'll uh, confirm that shortly. If I click Query Table, it just uh, populates a very uh, um, 
uh, like a, a template SQL query for you so that you can get started with the naming convention for um, the table names. Um, and if I were to do something like select star, it's going to process the full table uh, and just uh, limit, uh, just, just display the first uh, thousand uh, rows. Instead of doing that, we can actually click the preview tab here and you'll actually be able to see the, you know, an example of what the data looks like. In this case, um, you can see an origin and an effective connection type and a form factor, which are the dimensions. And then the histogram data is um, is stored here as, as an array. So you can see the histogram start and, and then the density. Um, so let's actually start off by kind of doing like the hello world of SQL queries. And we'll say, uh, how, many how, many, how many rows are in this table? So, and we saw this on the details tab before, there's um, just, just over 10 million rows of data. But now what I want to do is I want to count the distinct origins. So I'm going to say I want to count the distinct, distinct origin. So I want to know how many unique origins are there? Um, how, many, how many actual websites are, are, do we have here? And in this case, we have 3.9 million. So there's 10 million rows, but that's because there's different form factors and there's different connection types. Now, an origin could be, I mentioned before that an origin is going to be, is not be product all independent. So we've got HTTP and HTTPS for the same origin. Uh, I can also use another um, a, a standard SQL function called net.host to strip out the URL characters and just look at the host name. So www.example.com would become or HTTP colon, HTTPS colon slash slash www.example.com would become www.example.com. Uh, and if we go ahead and run that, you can see that there's about 3.8 million unique websites. So there is going to be some websites where, um, there, and it's probably going to be to the tune of 100,000, where there's for both, for both HTTP and HTTPS, but for the most part, you've got a, a, single, a single origin. Uh, for a website. Now, how do you figure out which, what the what the origin is? So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I want the distinct origin, um, and I'm going to add a where clause. And I'm going to say where the origin is like, and I'll put wildcard example.com. And now what I can see here is a list of uh, 27 examples, uh, example websites, and I have code example, learn by example, go by example, and so forth. But let's say I just want to look for .example.com. Um, I'm going to refine that as well. So now I'm looking at just subdomains of example.com, and I can see that for this one, we've got both HTTP and HTTPS, colon slash slash www.example.com. So the next video we're going to go into how to how to query some of this data and what um, and what you'll be able to do um, do with it in terms of you know comparing uh, connection types and form factors across different websites and looking at histogram data. Thanks for watching.